Finally Friday. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. We're gonna get into the tech news in a second after I tell you about today's video sponsor, Synergy, my friends. In case you haven't heard of them, you haven't used them, you haven't seen them before, Synergy is an application that allows you to control multiple devices using one keyboard and mouse from one central location. I typically show you that I control this PC back there with my keyboard and mouse right here, but that's down for various reasons and I, I have to I have to fix my test bench system. But that's, if it was open, I could use Synergy on this computer to control that one. And you don't just have to have a PC. It works on Windows, it works on Mac, it works on Linux, whatever have you. You can make it so that you don't need a KVM switch. I don't have to run extra cables that way. You don't have to have multiple keyboards and mouses on your setup. You can just do one. Simplify your life with Synergy. You can check them out at the link in the video description. $29 for the regular software, $39 in case you need a pro SSL encryption. You can check them out at the link in the video description. Check out Synergy today, my friends. And check out the news, tech news, hot news. You ready for some NVIDIA CPUs? We got Intel moving away from CPUs, or I guess you could say they're moving away. Really, they're just failing. Anyways, they're moving on to the GPU side of things. Well, NVIDIA might be reversing course, you know, going in the opposite direction, conquering GPUs, and then also taking over CPUs because there is new information coming out from Bloomberg that NVIDIA is heavily interested in the purchasing of ARM from SoftBank. SoftBank looking out to actually sell this to somebody or potentially just putting the stock options out there. And it does appear that NVIDIA is one of the top contenders for purchasing the company. Bloomberg does point out that this would face intense regulatory discretion and people looking into this, obviously because of the fact that NVIDIA is so huge in the GPU space, them taking up ARM, which is used in a whole host of applications, whether it be phones or the upcoming Apple Silicon or a whole bunch of different things. NVIDIA owning this could potentially lead to some legal issues down the road or just some oversight that would necessarily need to exist. But NVIDIA, ARM, NVIDIA starting to make CPUs. We start getting everything coded for ARM because Apple's on ARM, NVIDIA CPUs are on ARM, x86 dies out, Intel loses their crown because they are the ones who hold the x86 license, and AMD switches over to ARM, everybody's on ARM, and NVIDIA wins because everybody's licensing from them, and then Intel loses. This is, this is NVIDIA's plan to take down Intel. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know enough about the behind the scenes of all of that, but, Nvidia, CPUs, what do you think about this? Is this what you wanted to hear? Let me know down below in the comments and let me know what you think of this information that's coming out from Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. He talked about how with Nvidia's troubles with coming up with Ampere with TSMC because TSMC didn't want to budge on pricing and structuring with AMD that they actually had to end up going with Samsung's eight nanometer nodes. Well, that could potentially mean that we would have a short lived eight nanometer RTX 30 series. And as early as next year, we could see an RTX 30 super series on TSMC seven nanometer node like Nvidia originally wanted, but they had to settle for Samsung's eight nanometers. So 30 series launching in one to two months, but then the 30 super launching within a year after that. What do you think about that? Let me know down below in the comments. And also apparently DLSS 3.0 was supposed to be a big push in this marketing stuff because it appears that big Navi and Ampere might be able to go head to head. So Nvidia's advantage is the tensor cores that they can use to AI upscale images. DLSS 2.0 actually looks really good compared to what DLSS 1.0, which was just smearing Vaseline on your screen, DLSS 2.0 actually looks better sometimes than the native resolution setup and DLSS 3.0 is supposed to work on any game that has temporal anti-aliasing. So that could be very exciting. And I would also think that that actually would be a selling point. You can get higher frame rates and also look the same or better because we're using AI upscaling. It makes sense. But that's not the only next gen stuff we got to talk about. Xbox had their game showcase yesterday where they showed off a whole bunch of games that some people were hoping for, other ones that were a surprise, and then others were just nowhere to be seen. Them showing off Halo Infinite gameplay, which on the stream looked really bad, probably be because of compression. The 4K gameplay looks a little bit better for me. I'm not into it. Let me know what you think of the Halo Infinite. Fable got announced as a remake. We also got Stalker 2 trailer, which looks pretty cool. We got Forza Motorsports world premiere. And then finally, the RPG from Obsidian Avowed, which essentially just looks like Lord of the Rings crossed with Elder Scrolls. 
I'm kind of hyped for it. Looks really good. Obsidian making some good stuff. And then also they showed more of the medium, which was a game that they showed off previously, which has a dual reality gameplay setup where it's rendering two worlds simultaneously that you have to switch between. It looks really intriguing and probably one of the most uh, enticing ones that I thought gameplay wise from the trailers that dropped yesterday. Let me know. What did you think about the Xbox game showcase? What do you think of Halo Infinite or any of the other games that Xbox showed off? I'm keen to hear from you. And then I'm also keen to pick one of these chips up. I've talked about this so much. AMD obviously hurting my heart when they decided to go OEM only for the Ryzen 4000G APUs for now at least. Well, we've seemed to have confirmed pricing or suggested retail pricing of the APUs and it's not as cheap as you would think, but it's also not terrible. The Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G looking to come in at a retail price of $309, $20 cheaper than the 3700X. It performs roughly on par CPU wise, but then you do get the dedicated GPU, the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G coming in at 209, and then the Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G coming in at 149. What do you think of those prices? And what do you think about the fact that AMD's laptops, the new Ryzen 4000 Renoir, also APUs, have not been able to be seen with anything higher than an RTX 3060? A lot of people suggested the fact that Intel may be uh, putting some money out there so that these laptop companies don't use AMD chips because, oh, look at how fast they are. Why aren't they using them with the RTX 2080? Well, according to a new block diagram coming out from Igor, lab it turns out that the reason may be because AMD didn't design the chips to work properly with high-end graphics cards with the indication that they are only using a PCI Express by 8 or by 4 lane which means that they actually couldn't get the full impact of a higher end GPU out of these Renoir CPUs that are going into the mobile products. So the 2060 is where they're going to cap simply because of the PCI Express interface that they're actually using to communicate with the discrete GPU. There you go. That's more than likely the explanation. Don't ascribe to malice what you can simply ascribe to ignorance or just normalcy. Like this is obviously a super complicated thing. Obviously people are skeptical of crap that Intel has pulled in the past, but it seems to be that it's AMD's fault, nobody else's, which makes sense. And is, is it really even a fault? I mean, an RTX 2060 is still pretty good. It just means you don't get super expensive laptops. I don't know, what do you think of this? But I can tell you what Tesla thinks of Rivian is thieves. Dirty thieves is what they are. Tesla suing Rivian for stealing trade secrets. Tesla alleging that Rivian recruited its employees with the sole purpose of actually getting industry secrets out of their Tesla employees. However, Rivian has responded, obviously, as they would, saying that it's baseless and saying that they admire Tesla for its leadership, but we just did normal hiring strategies and that uh, we don't have any of their intellectual property in our systems. Obviously, we'll have to see how this plays out in a court case, but it is interesting that Tesla is trying to sue them for trying to steal trade secrets rather than than them implementing Tesla technology into their cars. Rivian obviously doesn't have anything on the market, so maybe Tesla can't necessarily know that. We'll have to find out. But Tesla also in the news because they had a huge Q2 when other auto manufacturers actually didn't do so well. And in the earnings call, Elon Musk announcing that they are building their next Gigafactory, which is going to produce Cybertrucks, Model 3s and Model Ys in Austin, Texas, which is gonna be directly next to the Colorado River. It's saying it's going to be an ecological paradise and open to the public, but I can't wait to get a cyber truck. I have my pre-order down. Now it's about whether or not I can afford it. We'll find out eventually. And you'll find out eventually that if you are on a 2G or 3G phone and you're on T-Mobile, you might just be ending up getting kicked off because T-Mobile is going to be switching away and switching off their networks at the end of this year, beginning of next year. They are only going to allow new phones on their network starting August 4th uh, that support VOLTE or voice over LTE. And on January 31st, they will require all phones on T-Mobile to support that. So if you're on a previous gen phone, you're gonna be screwed Screwed, which makes me sad. Does this impact you? Let me know down below in the comments. And uh, this is gonna impact some people. TikTok is starting a $200 million creator fund for its top creators in order to hopefully avoid a Vine type of exodus from their platform. This is one of the main reasons that Vine died was that the 
creators could, couldn't get paid there. And it looks like there's gonna be applications opening in August for uh, creators who are over a baseline for followers and over 18, so they haven't uh, specify what that's going to be and they're going to roll out 200 million dollars over the next year and to grow the funds during the time we'll see if this actually matters the u.s obviously considering banning tiktok at some point so this could be all moot at at some point in the future but also is this enough for them to pay all creators to continue to grow the platform i think that's one of the things that youtube has done well that maybe other platforms haven't that even if you are of modest size you can earn a decent uh, income here over on YouTube. You don't necessarily have to be one of the top creators in order to replace a part-time job. In order to replace a small amount of income, you can do it with 100,000 subscribers here. You don't have to be at the tippy top. So if this is only gonna be for the tippy top, it might not necessarily encourage up and coming creators. So we'll see. And you won't see Tenet at your home anytime soon, ATT CEO saying, no, 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 no. We're not releasing this to HBO Max. No, 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 no. This is one of those movies you have to go see in the theaters, okay? Uh, I, I don't understand it. I, I just, I don't understand. You're gonna release it on Blu-ray eventually. So how is this, like, yeah, I guess we could watch it in the theater, but we literally can't right now in the middle of a pandemic. So what do you, why? I don't get this. Bill and Ted, on the other hand, is getting this because they are gonna be releasing on streaming. You can see it in the cinema if they're open near you or stream it at home starting September 1st. This is, this is the right way to do it. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna rent this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream Bill and Ted because I can and I would for Tenet, but I'm not going to now. I would sign up for HBO Max in order to watch Tenet. I'm freaking excited for that movie. I'm less excited about their pretentiousness around the whole thing. It, maybe it's just because I'm not an industry insider with the film industry, but it just seems pretentious. The, the whole movie going experience. No, just let me watch the dang movie at home, okay? And I'm gonna let you go because this episode of Hot News is over, but it's not over until you click down below on the link for today's sponsor, Synergy. Get the app that allows you to control multiple devices, one keyboard and mouse. Check them out down below, Synergy. Also, check yourselves out of Hotel California. 